God who by the passion of Christ was son our Lord abolished the death integrated from ancient sin by every succeeding generation grant their justice being conformed to him we are born by the law of the nature the image of the man of earth so may the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man man of heaven through Christ our Lord The first reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. Chapter 52, verses from 13 to 53 and 12. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle among many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they shall see. And that which they have not heard, they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no harm, no form or comeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire of him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was buried for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that bears its shares his dumps. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for this generation, was considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, striking for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes things and himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, that is my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord.
Thanks be Thanks. to God. Your response with the Psalms will be. Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, and chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is every 
respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and he was heard for his godly fear although he was a son he learned obedience through what he suffered and being made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him the word of the lord thanks be to god kindly stand up for the gospel acclamation The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley. To a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met them with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. Jesus said to them, I am he. They stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am He, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. The 
this was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew in, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malichus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into the sea. I may not to drink the cup that the Father has given me. So the soldiers, their officers, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and banned him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest at year. Caiaphas was the one who had a It was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the women who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with himself and warming himself. And the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciple and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong, but if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound, to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, 
are you? He denied it and said, I am not one of the slaves of the high priest. I will let you off the man whose ear Peter had cut off. Asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at the moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests has handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into this world to testify the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth, listen to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is true? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wore a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. 
and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing that crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucified. Him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he is claimed be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friends of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone's Pavement. All in Hebrew, now it was today of the preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucified. Pilate asked him, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It ran, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the 
juice. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother, her sister, Mary, the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Son. Then he said to the disciples, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of so wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of his son and held it in his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is Then he bowed his head and gave Let us pause for a while and kneel down. Since it was the day of the preparation, the 
that you stayed not one, the bodies left on the cross, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and that one's blood and water came out. He who saw this has been testified, so that he may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occur so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because of the spear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and remove his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen and cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one else had been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Can you be seated? My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, Son of God is dead. Jesus, who came to redeem the humankind, the Messiah, is dead. Where there is no justice, no love, no peace, no fellowship and sacrifice, God is dead. Once a preacher in England came to the church with an empty cage. People looked at him surprisingly. He began to speak. He said that in the previous evening he saw a boy with his cage with three old country birds. The preacher asked him, 
what he was doing to do with them he said he would have fun with them by pulling out their feathers preacher asked him again what he would do after that the boy said he would put them as a feed to his cat then the preacher asked the boy to sell them to him he paid 10 dollars and bought them this is the story of that empty cage he continued his sermon there was a conversation between jesus and satan who came from the garden of eden satan came with the glee after the victory of conquering adam and eve who represented the entire humanity jesus asked satan satan what he is going to do with them he said he would have fun with them making them to suffer in the eternal fire jesus asked the price to free them satan said the price is the entire blood and the life of jesus jesus shed his blood till the last drop and gave up his life thus the humanity was saved my dear brothers and sisters today we are observing good friday the day on which our savior died on the cross when the head of the family dies if any of his children are absent the last message is communicated to them to the others the children have to live by those principles and fulfill their duties as the two children of their father 2020 years ago when the son of man died on the cross he left his message through three persons the first person is prophet isaiah he gives us three messages the first one is that in isaiah 53:5 we read he was pierced for our sins he was crushed for our iniquities the second one is that in isaiah 53:2-3 we read he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him he came down from his state and accepted crucifixion and death and at last in isaiah 53:11 we read after he had suffered he will see the light of life and be satisfied that is whatever we sacrifice for our sake of others will not go in vain the second message is from letter to hebrews none of us have suffered like jesus even here after no one will suffer like him secondly for we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who is very respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin he conquered his temptations but we are denying to conquer our temptations the third message comes from evangelist john jesus in his life never submitted himself to any injustice he confronted the soldier who slapped him yet he is submitting himself in all humility to his father's will the good friday service begins with a silent procession and a celebrant prostrating himself before the altar we see this action only once a year what does it say we are nothing our nothingness and worthlessness before god is manifested by this humble prostration the celebrant speaks for all of us as he 
lies face down on the floor the central message that is given in today's liturgy is that there will trials and tribulations struggles and sufferings especially for those who have sacrificed themselves for the public life for the welfare of the humanity we should not be frightened by them and get away with it but to fight till the end like jesus we need to humble ourselves and forgive like jesus at the sunset of our life we should pass from this world without any hurts and regrets from the cross jesus prayed father forgive them for they know not what they do his crucifixion and death expresses his unfathomable love towards humanity when we understand and experience the power of god's love the tragic story transforms into the greatest love story of all time the sacrificial act of jesus speak to a god who is willing to give up his son so that we humans can experience the power of his unrelenting undying love for us it was not nailed that held jesus to the cross it was his love for us edinburgh is a tourist city and there was a river that divided to another city the river was so large to the extent even the ships go through that way railway bridge connected both cities it is like our pamban bridge in rameshwaram there was a god who maintains the railway bridge in 1898 in the month of june a train was approaching and he had to open the gate he saw his little son was playing there if he had to save his son hundreds of people in the train would die he had no time to rethink even he opened the gate the train passed as usual they never knew the sacrifice of that little boy and his father this is what jesus did he sacrificed his life that we may have life life in fullness my dear brothers and sisters in jesus christ our dear pope francis said something during his very first general audience that inspired me to reflect on the suffering jesus endured during his passion for the sake of our redemption he said living holy week means increasingly enduring into god's logic the logic of the cross which is not first of all that of pain and death but of love and of self giving that brings life jesus body is the standing icon of what humanity is doing and what god suffers with in and through us it is an icon of utter divine solidarity with our pain and our problems each person who approached it that good friday evening bore some kind of sorrow and they were only a few representing millions more outside our church scratch the surface of any group and you will find the tragedies those who venerated the cross came close to the crucified jesus to find meaning in their own burdens connecting their pain to his meant that they did not suffer alone wave after wave of people in vast variety approach the lovely couple whose daughter died last year in the freak accident the vulnerable elderly who could who could barely bend to touch it a man battling cancer the wife of an iraq veteran addicted to painkillers the celebration of the passion of the lord on good friday this year has a particular significance because of the terrible pandemic that 
has striken the whole world the cardinal wrote indeed on the day on which we celebrate the redeeming passion and death of jesus on the cross who is like a slain lamb has taken upon himself the suffering and sin of the world the church raises her voice in prayer to god the father almighty for all humanity and in particular for those who suffer most while she awaits in faith and joy of the resurrection of her spouse trials and tribulations are sure to come we need to face them courageously like jesus where there is no love no sacrifice no justice and no brotherhood there is no god let us make jesus alive by our loving deeds and merciful acts Let us pray for the Holy Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace. To God her and to unite her throughout the whole world. and grant her leading our life in tranquility and quiet we may glorify God the Father Almighty let us kneel living god who in christ revealed your glory to all the nations watch over the work of your mercy that your church spread toward all the world may to serve in steadfast faith in confessing your name to christ our lord amen let us stand up pray for the pope let us pray also for our most holy father pope that our god and lord who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe in an harm for the lord's holy church to govern the holy people of god Let us kneel. <clears throat> Almighty, ever living God. my whose decree of all things are founded who will favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the pope chosen for us that under him the christian people governed by the end maker may grow in merit by reason of their faith through christ our lord stand up let us pray for all orders and degrees of the faithful let us pray also for our bishop for all bishops priests and deacons of the church and for the whole of the faithful people let us kneel
my tea of a living God. My who's put in the whole body of the church, he sanctified and governed. Here are humble, humble, pray and for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Stand up. Let us pray for catechumens. Let us pray also for our catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of His mercy. That having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever living God, who make your church ever faithful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Stand up. Let us pray for the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together. Keep them in His one church. Let us kneel. what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock, your flock of our son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the Jewish people. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that He may grant them to at once in love of His name and in faithfulness to His covenant. Sleep. 
almighty ever living god who bestowed your promises on abraham and his descendants graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through christ our lord amen let us stand let us pray for those who do not believe in christ let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ that enlightened by the holy spirit they too may enter on the way of salvation let us living god grant to those who do not confess christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your love may be made more perfect witness to your love in the world to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God. That following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find a way to God Himself. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever living God, who created all people to seek, always by desiring you and by finding you, come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may rec recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and the Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray for those who are in public office. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to His will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us
Almighty, ever living God, in whose hand lies every human heart, and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us. That throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray for those in tribulation. Let us pray till we believe to God the Father Almighty that He may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive up hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety. and salvation to the dying. Let us Almighty, ever living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the powers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in the hour of me your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Stand. Let us pray for the people affected with COVID-19. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, our cleanser, our healer and comforter, that He may rid the people of all suffering from COVID-19 grant the people of the world peace and health. Let us Ever living God, comfort of COVID 19 mourners, strengthen of all who suffer of this virus. May the prayers of those who cry out in tribulation come before you, that all those people who are suffering in COVID 19 may rejoice through Christ our Lord. and sisters, let us all stand.
The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to save. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. receiving of the body Lord Jesus Christ not bring me to judgment and condemnation but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy behold the Lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe 
for eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and the resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy. Then by partaking of this mystery, we may have life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessings. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people, who have won the death of your Son in Hope of the resurrection, may pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. 